if you didn't know if you aren't following me on instagram um, i shared that i went through my first round of ivf so i've been going on this crazy fertility journey with my husband i wanted to share my journey on here today because i feel like infertility is so isolating and it's lonely and until you open up to someone or you talk about what you're going through you don't realize how big of a community that it actually is when i shared my story on instagram i was so grateful for the amount of people who i don't know how i'm gonna make it to this video <laughs> i was so grateful for the outpouring of love and um it just meant so much to me because i had been kind of hiding that part of my life while the rest of my life i was putting on camera and pretending like everything was fine um i wanted to share this story today because i know that there are other people out there who are suffering and i just want them to know that you're not alone in this journey that there are so many people going through this as well i have a whole vlog that i'm going to show you of my journey of what i went through the past few months it is very intimate footage but it's very important i think a lot of people when they hear you're going through fertility treatments they automatically assume it's a one and done procedure that's not the case it's months of different hormones different injections surgeries um, there's a lot of ups and downs and it's not just you have the procedure one day and that's it you are literally prepping your body for months it was just a lot of a lot to go through so I feel like it's important for people who don't really know what this process is to understand it's not just a one-time thing it's days on days on days of a lot of emotional and physical things that you have to endure in your body I guess um, what's next is just kind of taking a little peek into what I've been going through the past few months so <laughs> I just got this gigantic box if you can see that full of all the medication that I'm gonna be taking in the next few weeks of IVF this is so much medication <laughs> I can't even believe this. This box it has to be, I mean, it's huge and it's full to the brim. All right, so here they are out of the box. A few of them are in the fridge because I guess I need to be refrigerated, but this is all going into my body <laughs> within the next few weeks. We spent the weekend painting for the future baby room. It's a little premature, but this room actually had to get done anyway. It was a really ugly peachy color. So Dom painted the walls and then I did all the built-in shelves, which are probably still drying, but they look pretty good. We put new knobs on them. So I'm really excited. We just have to get some window treatments up and we'd like to start to get the room carpeted, but that's just a little update. Kind of getting us excited. There's Perry. No, no, Perry. So, the room's a little bit of a mess still from painting, but kind of helps us think positive for IVF, which is like getting this room together. So, today is October 8th, and yesterday I had my HSG test, which I was going to vlog. Unfortunately, we learned that before we do IVF, if at all, I have to get surgery done because there's something wrong and I had no idea, like literally no idea. I've never had any hunch or feeling at, at all that, that anything was wrong. So apparently when he was doing the ultrasound and I could see it as well, I possibly, I have signs that I have endometriosis, which I am shocked. I've never had a symptom. I don't have like any symptoms and I know that it's possible to have it without symptoms. It's just so shocking. I mean, I was so heartbroken yesterday when I heard that because I had no idea. And basically I have to go get surgery before IVF to get the scar tissue removed. I cried all day yesterday. I broke down, I could not film. I wouldn't even think about film. I mean, I laid in bed bawling my eyes out from 
I don't know, when we got home around like 11 until probably 7 p.m. I was really upset. I thought like, wow, here's like something else that is preventing us now. And um, so I'm basically just waiting for my doctor's office to schedule my surgery and it, and it could be any day now. So today is October 30th and yesterday I did my hysteroscopy. I was really, really nervous going into it. I was upset that I had to get surgery, but I'm really glad that I did it. Um, my doctor was able to go in and get rid of anything that would have prevented the IVF process from working. He showed me photos, it's all clear now, and he basically said that it is beautiful in there and it gives it an A+. Plus. So we are moving forward with IVF. Um, I'm just so happy with the results and on Sunday I start my cycle I'm done with birth control and Wednesday it's projected that I get to start my stimulation for my ovaries which involves a lot of hormonal injections and um, they said the week of November 17th is when we get to do the IVF process so long as my cycle starts when they predict it will and I'm just so excited. That means we're like two weeks away from doing IVF and it just all feels real now. So I'm just really excited and I'm so happy for the news <laughs> that everything is clear and there's nothing wrong anymore and um, we should be good to start our process. And it's crazy to think that like a month from now I'll be pregnant. Okay. <laughs> and below your belly button. Jesus Lord. Babe. I'm gonna cry. And she said flick your wrist. <laughs> Just be careful in case I pass out, okay? Shit, I don't know if I can do this. I thought I could, but I don't know. Okay. Sorry. It's harder than I thought it was. Do you think you could do it to me? Because I don't even know if I can do it. <laughs> oh my god, I can't. Okay. <laughs> we gotta stop. It's like, gonna take two hours yeah. to do this. <clears throat> Try to do it like straight. Straight? Yeah, like that, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> I almost did it and then I, I see stuff coming out and I feel like I gotta do it. I'm sorry, this is like way it's harder okay, than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. <laughs> You see, yeah, well, you're not going to be able to do it either. <laughs> oh, I, I hate this. <laughs> my camera's going to die before I get this yeah. done. Is that zero? You did it, babe. Oh, it burns. You did it. Yesterday was my egg retrieval and um, I just haven't been feeling very good. I've had, I'm having a migraine since last night. I think it's just from the anesthesia and all the medication they give you. I'm just really having a bad <laughs> migraine. Um, there's, it's really hard for me to walk since I got home yesterday, just like all the cramping and there's like a lot of pressure after they remove your eggs um so i've just not been not been feeling good at all but on the other hand i'm really excited because they were able to retrieve 23 eggs which is like an insanely good number so i'm really excited about that i think 
15 is what they aim for and I was able to get 23 so I'm really happy and I'm just waiting for a call to find out how many were mature enough and um, how many got fertilized because last night they did the actual ICSI which is where they put they physically put a sperm into the egg and they take like the best sperm of the sample so today we find out how many fertilize and then I think within the next few days we find out uh, the grade of each embryo so we'll know how many will be able to freeze or put in and after this entire journey we've kind of decided it sounds so crazy but to put two embryos in um we both agreed that we're fine with if we get twins but i think it helps our chance of at least getting one so we're probably going to be parents to twins <laughs> If this all goes through I'm just waiting for this phone call because this is gonna be the biggest stepping stone to find out if they actually fertilized so it's still Monday it's only been a few hours since I last like checked in I'm still in bed I'm still trying to recover from surgery and just not feeling 100% yet but I did just get a call from our nurse and they let me know that out of the 23 eggs that they retrieved yesterday that 20 of them were um, mature enough to attempt fertilization and then 15 of those mature eggs fertilized so this is an insane huge step in this process i this is like I'm just, my mind is so blown. I did not expect to have 15 eggs fertilized. That's a lot of eggs. So I basically told Dom, like, you know, if we put two embryos, we're probably going to have twins because 15 embryos is really, really good. And um, now we're just waiting to find out the grade of the eggs. So on Wednesday, I'm expecting a call to find out what the grade of, how many of each um, grade we have out of the 15. So fingers crossed that we have a bunch of double A because that's what we are wanting. And um, we're pretty sure at this point that we're gonna put two embryos in, which is really scary. It's really hard to decide, like, do you want to just put one? Do you want to put two? And after everything you've been through, you kind of want to do two because you feel like this has been a long process and, like, let's just do one and done. Like, we, we have the two, the one pregnancy, and then we're done. Um, but I don't know. I think we're going to do two. I think we want to have two at the same time and experience, after all this waiting, like, just let us have two. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm just waiting for a call back from the nurse on Wednesday, and Friday is my embryo transfer. So, literally this Friday, I'm going in, and they are putting our sweet little embryos inside me in hopes that they implant. I can't believe we're here already. Um... Now I'm just like, I've been waiting, you know, to find out if they fertilize. I was really nervous and excited. Now I'm just waiting to find out the grade. I can't believe we made 15 embryos. Like, this is, okay, now I'm going to cry. <laughs> I can't believe we did it. Like, we actually made embryos. This is like the first time in this entire experience of trying to conceive when we actually made 15. That's crazy. So I think after the last footage of the vlog was going to be doing my transfer that week and basically what they do is after they take the eggs out and they see how many fertilize then they grow them for three to five days in the lab and we were doing a five day transfer. It was a fresh transfer not frozen meaning like none of them were ever frozen. So they just grew them in the lab and we ended up getting nine perfect embryos out of it which is really good. We ended up transferring two very perfect embryos. This one up top is a 5AA and this I believe was a 4AA. Um, I think 6AA is the best. So we had some pretty good embryos and um, basically they 
it's a very quick process it takes about five minutes it was very intimate basically my husband got to be in the room with me and i laid on the table and we got to see the embryos in a video microscopic video so we could see them on camera and then we watched them transfer them into the room and then we got to watch them transfer them into my uterus which this is a photo of it and they're somewhere in there so they got to transfer we got to watch them be transferred into my uterus and see them on camera and everything and it was just a really nice experience for me and my husband and we kind of and then we just laid there for 30 minutes because they don't want you to move afterwards and and then we waited and um me being the very impatient person that I am I started testing for pregnancy at three days past transfer which would be eight days past ovulation and of course I got a negative and then I would test again the next day and I would get another negative and then I just kept testing every single day and by um, I think I went to get my blood test on 10 days past transfer so by 9 days past transfer all of my tests were negative and I kind of knew in my heart um, that it failed so I feel like the worst part is going through all of that and um having to go get your blood taken and you you know and i know you can still get a positive blood test even if you have a negative pregnancy test but that's not technically good news so i went in there and i you know i got my blood taken and i drove home and neither of them had taken and they let me know in the afternoon that i wasn't pregnant and I don't think I've ever felt like lower in my life. So I had to deal with this like grieving process. Oh my gosh, I'm such a sap right now. I had to deal with this grieving process and that's where I've been. There's a lot of different steps of grieving with this. Um, this is still a loss and it's just really hard to navigate. I've never experienced this before. And they don't really prepare you for like what to expect when it doesn't work. So December was a difficult month for me. And I know it was difficult for my husband too. I really had no motivation to do anything. I just felt really lost and I still kind of feel that way because I just, it's really hard to navigate through this. But I feel like it's important to talk about it because people are going through all different kinds of struggles that you're not aware of unless they talk about it. And I feel like infertility is one of those things that people just don't talk about. And I, I'm seeing more and more people go through it and talk about it and that's wonderful, but it is hard. So I wanted to share my experience and um, I also wanted to share with you guys, I thought um, I am going through a second IVF cycle currently. Um, I don't have to do all of those injections again, thank God, <laughs> um, because we have seven more frozen embryos. So, um, Actually, in a few days, I'm going to go get surgery. Uh, same surgery I had last time. Um, and then I get to do my transfer in February. So we are going to be transferring two embryos again. Um, this time it's a frozen transfer and we have an implantation protocol set for us. So we're praying that this is what we need. He also let me know that frozen transfers for some reason have a higher success rate anyway. So we're praying that our second time is our lucky charm. I think that's where I'm going to leave this video. This is a really difficult video for me to do and I just think it's important to talk about this. If you guys want me to do more videos on this, if you have questions about my journey, if you want to message me privately and talk, it's a different type of support when you're talking to somebody who has been through it than it is somebody who hasn't. It's still support, but it, it's a different type of support. So if you want to message me and talk about it, I'm here to talk to anybody who's going through it as well. If you guys want me to do more videos on my journey because there's still a lot to go, I'm happy to do that. I feel like it's easy because that's where my life is right now. That's what I'm going through. That's what is like completely consuming my everyday life is fertility treatments. So it's hard to do other videos sometimes. I just thank you guys so much for all the support, those of you who have reached out, those of you who knew, and I guess I will see you in my next video.